David Reinbacher did not disappoint in his Laval Rocket debut, scoring one of the filthier goals of the season, not to be outdone by his teammate Logan Mayu and other Habs prospect Lane Hudson in one of the biggest days for Habs prospects, especially defensemen. In maybe the past year or more, we have so much to break down coming up on this episode of Habs Digest, so you're going to want to stick around. Let's just get straight into this video, Jesse, and I want to talk a bit first about Lane Hudson and Jacob Fowler and as you saw in that opening clip oh my goodness Lane Hudson unbelievable stuff we'll play it again for you here the full clip we were all talking about David Reinbacher yesterday but this Lane Hudson sequence flew so under the radar this silky just dirty toe drag into the goal to score against Maine sending Boston University to the conference finals where they are up to face Jacob Fowler who made 28 saves in his recent performance and Boston College as they are set to play well if it depends when you're watching this video the game may have already happened or it's coming up but regardless Jesse Fowler versus Hudson this is uh probably the biggest Habs prospect rivalry we've seen this season of course the two Boston teams playing off in the Hockey East final for a ticket to go further in the tournament does it get more exciting than this <laughs> No, it's basically the Catalina wine mixer of oh, college yeah. games right now. You know, like, it's a big deal, right? And rightfully so. Like, this is the beauty about when your team drafts so well is you just got so many guys that you can really shoot, that you can really root for this time of year and that are playing so well. Like, just amazing. Like, Jacob Fowler, all he does is win. He's coming in on a wins record for his team this year in college. Absolutely unreal. Like, he just can't get enough of winning. It's what he does. And just to see him kind of continue – Right, like there's something to be said for that, right? So a lot more left in the tank there. And I mean, what can we say about our boy Lane? Like just coming up like so clutch again, like that wrist shot of his is padded. It. Like get used oh, yeah. to seeing the Montreal Canadiens fans. Like if he gets into a dangerous area and he's able to, like he's ripping that shot, that is going to go in. That's the things like when I see that shot, I'm like, yeah, that's going to go in on an NHL goalie. Not too worried about that. And many times over, Look at that. But just he's putting some mustard on it. You know, it's like that is going to translate very well to the NHL. The thing with Lane Hudson is you've heard it all year long. You heard it last year is his placement with his wrist shot. Is it the hardest wrist shot? Well, it's hard. It's maybe not the hardest of all defensemen in college. I mean, he's not the biggest guy, but when it comes down to placing his shots, creating those ideal opportunities with his positioning on the ice and turning that into a good a golden opportunity with a screen in front, whoever, whatever. It's got the, it's a similar thing to what Arbor Jack Eye does. Now, they could not be more different in play style and size, whatever. But when it comes to Jack Eye, you see when he shoots, that puck finds a way to the net. That is exactly what Lane Hudson does as well. But Jesse, we, we talk a lot about Lane Hudson. I know you mentioned Jacob Fowler a bit, but I wanted to give him his, uh, his Fowler flowers as well because Jacob Fowler has had one of the most dominant seasons for many goalie prospect in recent memory I know Dobesh had a really good season last year but uh, by all accounts this conference this year for Jacob Fowler seems better than what Dobesh did I believe it was at Ohio State I could be wrong on that but about this conference Hockey East is brutal now I know they won this game eight to one but going off in the finals here I know Jacob Fowler was really good for Team uh, USA and so was Lane Hudson but this is a chance to really make his mark you know the Frozen Four coming up in just a couple weeks this is where goalies really, I, I don't know, wouldn't, wouldn't say make or break, but this is when a lot of goalies show their nerves, right? These big tournament games. Fowler seems like the kind of guy that just doesn't get his nerves broken. We've seen him in interviews, all this kind of stuff. Just be like, yeah, I'm confident in myself. He has shown it every step of the way. It, when we're looking forward to tomorrow, are, do you think you're going to take Lane Hudson, Macklin Celebrini, and the offensive juggernaut Boston, actually tonight, I should say Boston University, or, I mean, again, the game might be over by the time you're watching this, so you can let us know in the comments if we were right or wrong, or Jacob Fowler going up and having a stellar performance. As much as I love Lane Hudson, here is what I think might happen. I think Hudson's going to get a point or two, probably maybe even a goal on Jacob Fowler, but I think that Jacob Fowler's Boston College might just eke this out, but this is going to be an incredible game to watch. Josh, once again, you know, birds of a feather. It's just because when you're coming up with two really competitive guys like Lane Hudson, Jacob Fowler, especially competitive type of players that love to win. Of course, Lane Hudson, such a dynamic. As fans of the channel know, we have loved this guy for so long. He just continues to give us every reason to feel this way. But that's the beauty about goaltending. When you come up against a hot goalie, we've seen it in the playoffs, whether it's in the NHL, whether it's in college hockey, 
that's just the game breaker, right? Mm -hmm. He has the most control over the game to really shape it in the best outcome for his team. So that's, again, the really the beauty of this, of having these type of prospects. So that's why, again, just my instincts are definitely telling me Fowler here. Of course, you never want to rule out Lane Hudson, but this is the power of having a potential star goalie and how they can really contribute to winning these key games. 100%. Hey, over the next few weeks, we're going to figure out uh, maybe when Lane Hudson will end up over in North America. There's a lot of stuff still yet to be told in that NCAA season, but yeah, it's going to be an exciting matchup nonetheless. But let's move on to the big topic, and it's David Reinbacher. Of course, he made his debut for the Laval Rocket, and as you're probably watching this video, again, there's another game Saturday night, which might not have happened yet when you're watching. It might have happened, so let us know what happens down below. We'll be talking about it for sure on Sunday, but, oh, Jesse, David Reinbacher, what a game this was. People were worried maybe Reinbacher wasn't gonna fit in Laval right away, and he said himself, hey, I had some nerves in the first half of the game, but after that, I settled in, and sure enough, he was right on the money with the Laval Rocket down two to nothing halfway through the third they managed to get one on the board followed by david reinbach with one of the sickest goals all season for any hab or habs prospect with that toe drag into the snipe of course the game going to overtime laval mounting the comeback not that sorry i gotta play the logan mayu and there it is giving it to logan mayu who snipes at home for the winner what a day for habs defenseman prospects but david reinbach or jesse i mean there was a lot of people talking about his performance leas anderson asked after the game like what's one thing that maybe you notice he said well in europe you don't ha you you have maybe an extra second to make a play because of the size of the ice here you don't and reinbacher did very well even coach jf Uhl said he really found reinbacher's zone exits good and his decision making when there's a lot of pressure on him is really good and he thinks that's an aspect where the team can improve and somewhere where David Reinbacher can really help them. Everything that we said would be good about Reinbacher happens now. He managed to get some extra minutes because William Trudeau unfortunately went down early in the game. So they were playing most of this game with five defensemen. And Reinbacher proved himself immediately to arguably be the most effective defenseman on the ice for stretches. Um, I, I don't know if you can get a better debut. Was he absolutely perfect? No, but there's nerves. There's a lot of stuff going on in this North American ice. But uh, my gosh, I, I feel like I couldn't have been more hyped after I saw him pop that one. Definitely, yeah. Reinbacher with the business early, coming ready to work. Josh, I love how we ha have the clips, you know, how we're able to kind of break it down. It's like, what I love on that sequence there from him scoring this goal, he's attacking the zone with speed. He's looking like a forward here. Mm -hmm. And then that deke that he's doing, this is at speed. And that's the biggest thing in the NHL is, can you, you can do deeks, but can you do it at speed Ooh. against, you know, so obviously this isn't the at the NHL level yet, but this is an NHL caliber deke the way he's able to attack at such speed and then still pull off this move and then to finish it off with that hard snapper there at the end like this was absolutely unreal the way that he could just like again his skating just allowing him to put in those areas to really be successful seeing that very early on it, it was kind of wild to me when i saw him go for that like the puck was there and he had that split second to make that decision. Should I go for this or not? Should I pinch? Yeah, well, guess what he did? He not even pinch. He's just like, I'm going all out attacking. He had a, a yeah. millisecond to make that decision and make sure it was the right one. And then to, to have the cojones to like do a toe drag around a guy in your AHL debut and then to not pass in the two on one. Some people were saying like, this is maybe the, the worst competition he's faced in a while. Don't know if that's necessarily true. The AHL is a very good league. Oh. So is the Swiss league. Don't want to, don't want to, you know, put down the bell for senators. They're ahead of the Laval Rockets still in the standings as Laval only made up one point, of course, but he looked so natural. And even with that smaller ice, his decision making, his maturity on the ice, it was I incredibly valuable because you could see that he knew when to make certain plays, when not to make certain plays. That right there, it takes a, I mean, well, maybe it takes just a big risk taker, but it also takes a lot of smarts to be able to pull off what he did there. And I, I just really think that everything came together as a whole for him. Um, Just before we maybe talk too much about Reinbacher, I wanted to mention Mayu too. I just feel like you know, he, he's a guy that we always like to talk about for his offensive potential, but he has been like this catalyst for this Laval Rocket offense for a huge portion of the season. Was he, is he at 20 goals? He might even be, or he's close to it. If not, uh, Logan Mayu with that overtime winner, that snipe off balance. We're going to play that one one more time for you guys. Like, look at this going the opposite way. Now he created a lot of this offensive possession. There's absolutely no chance for Matt Sogard there. Um, what about Mayu has, has impressed you, Jesse? Because to me, it's just that pure offense that we're seeing from a guy. It's extremely rare, no matter what level of hockey you are, for that kind of defenseman. 
and also the hockey IQ, the awareness there on that play, because there's really good puck movement, just general movement all around of just an overtime of moving the puck around really quick. But you see as Mayu kind of goes down deep in the zone, he kind of loses his defensive coverage. You know, he's able to kind of slip his defender, then in, emerge in this high danger area. And then he really is looking at where he wants to shoot. He's picking his spot and he makes no mistake about it going high there. Um, so, I mean, it was absolutely amazing to see. Like, that was some, again, this is how in the modern NHL, this is how you want to play in overtime. You want to have lots of movement, you know. And for me, I see young players that really get this early on that are being taught well that are going to be ready for that next level. There was uh, so much hype. Uh, so much hype surrounding house prospects and still even today like this video it all depends when you're watching this because as of the recording in this video those games had just happened the day before but there's again that boston college boston university game saturday night march 23rd plus another laval belleville game followed by laval toronto on sunday there's a ton of stuff going on with habs prospects and i'm sure you guys well hey if you want to keep up to date on all that stuff like i'm sure you do stick around here at habs digest and hit subscribe because we'll have daily updates on all things habs and habs prospects but that'll do it for this episode like i said hit subscribe hit the like button if you want to help support us i'm josh goss my co-host jesse pocket we'll catch you in the next one